last time I made a video, um, first of its kind, a build video, and an unboxing of the KP Suckless Dolphin. First video of it on YouTube. Very special. I've been trying to do first of videos on YouTube. Mainly of kits that don't have much information on videos. And I said last time that I should be producing another video. An unboxing and build. Well, this one looks difficult. I repackaged it how it was when I bought it. So you get the full authenticity of what it, you know, would look like out of the box. But I have opened it. And let's just say... It looks pretty difficult. The Roden Albatross of is that W H or is that W four W H four? Let's double check the back. The W four late. So the Albatross has got a lot of one seventy second scale kits. It has one by Pegasus Airfix. Edward, uh, Roden, of course, uh, I believe one by Ravel. <laughs> Most companies who pro have ever produced World War One kits have produced the Albatross because it is one of the most famous and overused, well, one of the most utilized German World War One fighters. And the float plane variant has only been made twice, one by um, Pegasus again. And of course, by Roden. The early version has a, mo a lot more of an easier colour But this version is definitely more difficult. With that pattern, um, looks pretty nice. But, well, as you'll see in the box opening, it's not as easy. This is main Ukraine. So, if you do purchase any Roden kits, um, you do actually support... A company currently being attacked, or a currently a company that is, you know, struggling, uh, or really just needs your help because currently they're caught up in the midst of a war. So, if you want to support uh, some Ukrainian model companies, well, Rodan's one of them. So, this color scheme, you get two, but. The one's not labelled properly. Albatross W4 Late. Unknown Marine Unit, late 1917. Now, the only difference is uh, the numbering. 486 or 511. Well, 1486 or 1511 as another box size. Literally the only difference. Um, the colour scheme has silver on the underside as well as on the underside the wings and the uh, elevators it's beige an overall sea grey and then on top the unique um, German tiled camouflage so let's get that open with the box so you have this cardboard pullout part so let's put the box there. So you get this, it's just, yeah, you can get rid of that, that's really rubbish. So, usually you'd have a tab at the top, and, and you pull it out, and in the first bag you have another bag, and this one, it protects all the decals, making sure to, that you don't lose the parts I did buy an Azor B10X Sport and it didn't have the instructions but luckily the instructions in this kit are all kept in a bag so you should not have lost anything I, I do say um a lot in these videos probably should try and teach myself not to do that sort of a bit of a bad habit so let's quickly look at them first because that's the first thing in the box. We have the iron crosses on like a white background. We have plain white crosses. These are for the top wings. Then we have these for the side, 486, 511, 
We then have these parts, which are, I believe, for the floats. Oh, wait, no, these ones are for the ailerons on both wings. And this is for the center section of the the top wing. Oh, uh, um, let's see. We got this, which goes on the, um, you know, this... This one to the left, I mean to the right. Um, this one goes down the spine of the fuselage. These two go on the floats. Um, this, these two go on the wings. This one goes on the massive elevator. These two bits, oh, I'm not sure. Actually, these might be the, cent the center section. Um, Hold on, I'm not sure. Oh wait, I know what these two are for. These are for the part that hold the elevators. You have the other part of the wings, because both of these wings have them. A few little stencils here. Instructions, quickly. Because I know most people want to see the parts. You have the sprue map. Always helpful. Then, as you can see, not stapled. Always annoying. You, like many wooden kits, you start assembling the engine first. You open it up. You got the fuselage, and they tell you to out these like squares. But as you'll see in the fuselage later, there isn't really any. So after this, you drill them out on the other side. You then add the rudder. And the elevators, the fuselage, and it's a big split diagram. It uses this piece, which can be alternated, but it tells us which version we need to do. We get the yoke. Uh, these might be the pedals, the engine, the front of the cowling, and the two wings. Which I might leave off for later. You then got the floats, pretty easy. The top wing with the center sections. They have, like, nothing to hold them. You then have all the support struts, which is actually pretty easy. You only have three on each side, as well as these middle ones. You then add these flimsy ones to hold up the floats. And you add the prop. And there you go. They give you a little bit of rigging, of a little rigging nap. And then we have the same colour sheet, which is a bit useless, but they do tell you you would alternate four and five which are the numbers. But don't use this, use the one on the back of the box. It's more useful. In the second bag, I believe we get five, four or five. Uh, five screws. Yeah, let's look at the main one. So we have these very glossy, greasy parts. The detail's very, very fine. There's a lot of flash. I removed some flash on this. I think I might have done it a bit wonky, if I'm correct. Look at that. Um, but I kept that bit, just if I need to glue it back on and trim it a bit better. So, that also looks pretty good. These wings as well. You get these, uh, well, I believe not all versions of the Albatross have two sets of ailerons. That's why we get some without which is for the bottom wing. Um, we got rudder pedal, this propeller. You see, a lot of flash. These two bits, which are probably the most flash ridden. Um, this is the one we'll need, the one gun version. These, I believe it's for two. Sorry, if, if it goes off wonky a bit, it's because my big, uh, ca uh, like my phone holder, it goes in the middle of my camera, and so I can only see left and right. So I'm trying to center it based off either side. Sorry about that. Um, oh, well, this is reversed. So we got two middle sections. One's got, like, pre an air filter because of salty air. This is, like, a specialized piece for the, the float version. We have the middle section... And the massive elevator tail section. 
we have these fuse line parts. Also pretty glossy and shiny. You can see just how small these holes are. So there's my finger. Look how small these holes are. And you're supposed to hold the wings on these. Oh, I'm not. This is why I'm so nervous about building this one. Uh, it just really seems like a hassle. We have the nose cone and part of the engine cowling inside. Very nice. Better than KP kit because the detail is very um, obvious. And there's no massive pin that's uh, like seeable. We have the specialised sprue. This is just for the floats. Very nice, very nice. These are not the biggest floats, but I do like how squared they are. A lot of detail on that. Sorry if I'm rushing it a bit. We got engine parts, and for the most part, this is just for, uh, you know, the struts, uh, the middle struts, and everything. Uh, and finally, the engine sprue, the really detailed engine sprue. So, I believe one of these is for water filtering, probably. And so that's probably all that's different. So, what do I think of this kit? Well, personally, I think it looks like a challenge. If I go back to the fuselage, if I go down this side... There's only two little tiny, uh, wait, that's, uh, let me try and get focus. There, there's one hole there, and, like, one hole back here, and that's all you're supposed to hold the floats on. As you can see, most of the holes aren't deep, so they don't really hold on. It is a cool concept, and this breed does go better together than the Pegasus version. Pegasus is short run pretty bad models but it's pretty different this one. I personally would say one of the most annoying parts which I've got to tell the, if the decals haven't been cut perfectly to size you have to measure them out before you put it all together because if I grab a wing. Um, let's see. It the decal just about goes round it. Yeah, you know, it it's a bit smaller. Well, it's a bit bigger than it needs to be. So you need to trim most of these to sizes big middle section especially <laughs> uh, if you get to see the middle section here you've got to trim it a lot which is gonna be pretty annoying especially try to get all lined up as well oh jeez it's gonna be a nightmare but I'm sure I'm sure a competent modeler can probably do it I'm so nervous about this one if a build video doesn't come out, I probably will tell you why, but it's probably because, um, of course, this kit is, looks pretty gnarly in sense of buildability. So, um, I should be building this soon. So, keep an eye out for this model, uh, um, build video, maybe in a few days. Because, you know, it's no longer the Easter holidays. So I've obviously had to go back to school. So soon enough, I will... Uh, soon enough, it will come out. So see you uh, whenever that is.